Hey guys and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. This is the last video in my C-Types tutorial series. We've made about three videos on C-Types so far. We've discussed a lot of things about it, how to set it up, what it is, how to use it, why we use it, data types, pointers, memory management, strings, etc. This is the last video and here we're going to be discussing how to use C++ functions instead of C. Okay, because up till now we've been using C libraries and C functions, but can we use C++? Yes, we can, but there's one or two limitations, one or two slight things to look out for, okay? And we'll discuss that right now, okay? So the thing is that the entire problem, there's only one problem due to which this entire limitations are caused. So let's discuss that problem. It's actually a programming concept called name mangling. Okay, now before I discuss name mangling, just remember that term for now. Let me discuss another concept first, function overloading. Chances are you've heard this before. Let me talk about that. Okay, so this is our CPP file. I'm gonna create a function here called func, okay? And this just prints out, sorry, not print, C out, uh, function one. Okay, now I want to create another function and this has the same name, but it has a parameter. Okay, oh, and hold on. Using namespace std. Okay, so this is a function, function with a parameter. Okay, and function with no parameters. And just to really make the concept hit home, I'm going to create another one with an integer parameter with a string parameter. Okay, now we have three different functions here and they all have the same name, but they're all different, okay? In C++ eyes, in, C++, in the C++ compiler's eyes, these are three different functions. Okay, this is a function with no parameters. This is a function with an integer as a parameter. And this is a function with a string as a parameter. Okay, but the confusing part here is, you might say, but they all have the same name. So when we call a function using func, how does it know which one to call? Okay, well, that's because of the return type, right? If you pass in an integer, it'll know to call this one. Okay, and if you call uh, a string, it'll call this one, okay? But how does C++ really do this? There's actually, it's not magic. There's actually a concept that actually, you know, does this, okay? Because every function, every entity needs a unique name, okay? That's something you should remember. Rem remember this, this is a programming thing. Every entity has a unique name, but they all have the same name here. Well, guess what? They don't. To you, it seems they have a unique name, but they don't. They actually have different names, but you don't know that, the but the compiler does, okay? To make it simple for you, this is what you're seeing, okay? You're seeing the name as func, but for the compiler, the name is a bit different. So name mangling is actually that concept. Name mangling, if you just look at the term literally, it means to mangle a name, which means to mess up a name, to modify a name. That's what C++ does. It modifies the name of these functions behind the scenes, okay? Behind the scenes, in the compiler's eyes, these functions have different names. And those function names are just the regular name, func, but they have some additional information appended to them that makes them unique, okay? Now, I know what I'm saying here sounds a bit weird. Maybe you've never heard of this before, but don't worry, I'm gonna show you some practical examples now. Okay, so what do you think could be added to the name func to make it unique? How could this function, how could the func for this function be unique from the one for this? Well, this is actually where name mangling comes in. Every language, most languages support name mangling in some way or the other, okay? Some more than others, some not really, some have it in a very minor degree, but Typically, name mangling, the exact method for it varies a bit from, from language to language, but generally it remains the same. 
Okay, in C++, what happens is this. This is the function name, func. So what it does, I think it's like this. One underscore or two underscores, I can't really remember. But either way, the concept remains the same. Okay, so it does, it takes the function name, func. It adds an underscore. And then it adds the type. Okay, the type of variable. For example, v, okay. If it accepts zero parameters or void as a parameter, it'll append v onto the function name. This is name mangling. We just mangled the name and changed it. Let's take a look at this function. What happens? What does the compiler do to it behind the scenes? It does this. I. Can you guess what the I stands for? It stands for integer. Okay. Now, what about the last function? It does this. Can you guess what the S stands for? String, okay? Well, let's take a look at one more example. I'm gonna take this. Let's, okay, let's keep that as a string and let's make this an integer. Okay, now uh, what's the name angle gonna be for this one? Well, it's gonna be this, S I. Can you guess what that stands for? S stands for string, I stands for integer. So this is how the function names are all defined in the back end. Okay, these are all unique names. Okay, so we're fulfilling that rule that they should all have unique names. Okay, now this was quite a lengthy talk on name mangling, more than I intended to, but this is the concept of name mangling. And just remember for now, I went a little overboard with, with my explanation. Okay, I'm actually, I was actually gonna make a separate video for name mangling and discuss that. I still will, but maybe we'll discuss some extra stuff in there but I think you guys understand this concept pretty well now, or at least I hope so. Okay, so just remember this for now. Just remember that behind the scenes, what's happening is that the names are being mangled. Okay, now, now let's actually see what this, you know, what this causes, what's the problem? Why is name mangling a problem? Okay, well, the problem is that C, okay, C does not support function overloading. C does not support name mangling. Okay, now this may not seem like a problem, but it actually is. For example, when the C compiler tries calling this, okay, for example, in our Python code here, we try doing C library dot func. Okay, now when the, when the C library, sorry, when the C compiler sees this, what is it gonna call? It's gonna call this. It's gonna call func. Okay, it's gonna call this. This or this, whichever. Okay, this is what this is what it's gonna try to call. Okay, now that's fine. But when we're using C++, what's actually being called is this. Okay, this is a different name. All right, this is a different name. Keep that in mind. So the entire point of what I've been saying for the last 10 minutes is that when you call this function, okay, when you do this, tell me, is it gonna work? Well, no, it's not gonna work. Why is that? This is a CPP file. Why isn't it gonna work? Well, the problem is that C types, the C types module treats them like C functions, okay? It does not support function overloading, okay? So the problem is right now, we're trying to call this function, but what we're act but the name of this function, the name of this C++ function is actually this. So when I try calling this function, like I will in a minute, you'll, it's gonna throw an error. It'll say that there's no function with that name because there really isn't. If this was the C++ compiler working, it would know to append a v onto it. it. It would append a v based off the fact that there's no, no parameters. And then it, it, would be, it would be making the correct function call. But that's not the case over here. Okay, so that's why this is causing a problem. Now, that was like a 10 minute background. Let's just run this code now and actually see the problem and how to fix it. Let me just navigate over to the correct folder. C types, and now we'll generate our file. Oh, by the way, I used GCC before, make sure you use G++, and then the same thing as before, shared minus O, 
and cpp library dot so cpp library dot uh, dot cpp okay for those of you who don't know this is the name of the shared library that we, i, I want to generate this can be any name okay just remember to keep the dot so extension and this is the name of the source the source library that's going to be generating the shared library okay and that's our cpp dot you know cpp library dot cpp file okay and shared means generate a shared library because that shared library is what we're importing the functions from. We're not, we're not importing it directly from the CPP file, okay? And underscore, sorry, dash O means output, okay, output it. So if I run this, what happens? This should throw an error. Actually, sorry, it won't. This is just gonna make it compiled. But, hold on, why is it taking so long? Okay, done. That was the first compilation that took some time. Anyways, if I try calling this now, let me just press the button, run code. There you go. And just like I said, function func was not found. It's not gonna work. All right, so now what? Well, this is not working, okay? But there's an easy way to fix this, okay? Now this entire video, I could have just shortened this into three minutes but then you wouldn't have understood what's really going on. You wouldn't have understood why we're doing what we're doing and you know, the entire story behind it, okay? But the solution to this is just to do this. Extern C. And there, done. There, that's it. What this, what this does is tells our compiler that this function is going to be used externally as a C function. So it doesn't perform name mangling on it. And if I try running this code, uh, let me recompile it. For some reason, I can never figure out how to bring up the terminal by itself. Hmm? Oh, let me just navigate over to the correct folder. Run this wrong command. R run this command and generate come on there and now i run this uh it says function with no parameters correct that's exactly what i wanted to, to have printed out okay but just keep in mind that you cannot use function overloading anymore because they're being treated like c functions functions with a parameter as you'll see this will just throw an error if i try to compile it or at least it should there we go, throws an error because it's saying conflicting definition because we cannot use function overloading anymore. So just keep that in mind. This is basically what you do. And what a lot of people do is create like, they do this, they create the function over here actually. And where'd, where'd the thing go? They do this and they do this. And they just call this function. This is what they do. What exactly this does is pretty obvious. I mean, there isn't really much to it. It's just a way of, you know, not defining the function in here. Okay, as a C function. This is still a C++ function. Because if I compile this, you'll see that it works. There you go. Okay, so this is something that you may find interesting maybe so that about wraps things up i hope you guys understood all of that and just a few other pointers to keep in mind remember to use c data types okay and you might have some problems using c plus plus data types like strings okay so do be careful okay because c types is more of a c library okay it's meant to work more with c so when you're using c plus plus make sure to use as many C data types and as many C functions as possible, okay? Otherwise there might be issues. But with this, I think you're good to go. You go ahead and use C++ in your code and import them into Python. And let me know how it goes. If there are any issues you have, let me know. And if there's something I can make a video on, something that I can help you guys with, let me know. And with this, we're actually done. We made four videos on C types in total. I'll have links to all of them in the description below so you can learn more about C types. Okay, there's even more about C types in this documentation. This documentation is vast. Okay, there's more I could talk about it, 
but this has been quite uh, an exhausting series. C types is something that really takes up your time and something that is definitely worth investing your time into, honestly. And if you're really interested in this kind of thing, I advise you do so, okay? The more complex you wanna get, the more complex features you'll realize that C-Types has. All right, so with this, let's end the video. I hope you guys subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and you know, leave some feedback. Hopefully you guys will follow up on some of the other videos we have, because we have a lot of Python content, a lot of C++ content, a lot of cool content out there. So yeah, see you guys in a later video.